Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So the Jets just wrapped up practice and supposedly, right, according to multiple reporters, it was a really, really clunky day, tough day offensively. Zach Rosenblatt of The Athletic actually goes on to say that it was the worst Jets practice, one of the worst Aaron Rodgers practices all offseason. And, you know, I, look, it's a practice, right? And on one hand, too, you have the defense doing well. Will McDonald actually had two sacks today, which is sweet, especially coming after that second preseason game. Uh, still no Hassan Reddick, right? So these reps for Will McDonald are, I mean, they're massive. And to see Will McDonald, or I, I guess rather here, that he's performing well, and we saw it on Saturday, and to come back in that first practice and boom, get in the backfield two times, that's a really, really good sign. I cannot be more excited for Will McDonald. Uh, but, right, looking at the offense, understanding the situation that we're currently in, right? We didn't see these guys start in the first preseason game outside of Joe Tittman. We didn't see him start in the second preseason game. Aaron Rodgers didn't participate in the first joint practice against Washington. It actually just got really dark. So not exactly what you want to hear as a Jet fan as we start creeping closer and closer to the start of the season. And then you factor in the injuries, right? Uh, no Mike Williams. You know, we keep hearing the same thing from Salah. He's, you know, progressing positively, which is great. Uh, clearly no Hassan Reddick. You know, still just a weird situation there. Uh, JBC, right? Bernard Converse and Isaiah Oliver both shut down for the rest of training camp with injury. You know, they, they should be ready for week one, according to Sala, but, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of practices just to, you know, just be wiped off the slate for two, you know, guys that I felt like were having good camps, especially JBC. And then we have the whole Michael Carter situation as well, where he hasn't practiced in, in weeks, you know, missed all of last week. Again, you know, the, the Panthers week, missing the start of this week, missed time against the Washington, uh, you know, in that first preseason week as well. There's only so many preseason games. There's only so many joint practices. There's only so many uh, training camp or sorry, weeks in the training camp period. You know, Michael Carter has missed a, a decent amount of time here. And what, what's weird about the situation is that when the injury with, with Carter first happened, Sulla talked about it like really nonchalant. Oh, you, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's not a long-term serious thing. And then, you know, he's he's at the podium today after practice, and he said that, um, you know, he, Carter is day-to-day. -day. So, you know, I guess on one hand, you, you could look at it as a positive, like, well, maybe tomorrow Carter will be good to go. But on the other you know, you kind of see Sala perk up when, when he's talking about Mike Williams, right? Oh, yeah, he's progressing positively. But in the case of Michael Carter, it's it's not necessarily standoffish, but it just kind of seems like the organization and the, and the coaching staff specifically has question marks. And, you know, again, like, what exactly are we dealing with here? And it's crazy because that's not, you know, the end of the injuries here, right? We, we like you to the team's primary run stuffer out for the rest of camp. Irv Charles dealing with injury, Jeremy Ruckert dealing with injury, um, you know, and, and then we have, you know, the, I, I think it was Connor Hughes that asked Sala in the post-practice presser, you know, if the starters are going to be getting any reps any time against the, the New York Giants in preseason, and Sala said that he hasn't discussed it, the, the Jets haven't discussed it, and it's, you know, I, of course, right, we had the joint practice on Thursday with, with the Giants, but we're starting to approach a weird territory here where it's like, okay, we haven't, the only starter we've seen on offense uh, is Joe Titman and, and, you know, potentially Olu Fashionu, uh in the event that something happens to Tyron or, or Morgan Moses. But, it, and, you know, it, it's not to say that the guys out there aren't going to see any time, Braylon Allen, Isaiah Davis, you know, I'm expecting to see a lot of these players, um, but it, Malachi Corley, but the point is, you know, Rodgers, Tyron, Conklin, uh, Garrett, Brees, these guys, I, I do think there is something to chemistry and continuity, especially when we're talking about an offensive line and a quarterback. Is it concerning that they haven't had a meaningful drive, not like not even a single snap in the preseason? Now, again, that could potentially change uh, this week against the Giants. Uh, but, you know, you're looking again at the state of today's practice. You're looking at the state of the joint practice against Carolina, where Carolina won the day. They were having mid to late round rookies beat our star players. Rogers did not look uh, did, did not look good against Carolina. 
you know, rookie head coach Dave Canales, record-wise, Carolina was the worst team in football a year ago. Bryce Young was fantastic against the Jets' defense. You know, again, I don't want to sit here and overreact, but at the same time, I want to be 100% prepared for San Francisco. I want this team to be healthy. I want that. I want them to be firing on all cylinders, picking up at the right time. But it seems like the Jets started fast in camp, and now as we're kind of uh, drifting through training camp, the injuries are there, guys are missing time, there's question marks, um, and we're seeing the defense just flat out dominate. So, yeah, I don't know. Let, let's, uh, Zach Rosenblatt actually has some numbers here that he counted from uh, Aaron Rodgers in camp, like as far as like the completion rate. Let's go over those real quick. He was 11 of 27 with an interception in 11 on 11s. It was his worst practice of camp. Of course, we have to factor in the multiple sacks as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see, uh, right? The Jets could come out tomorrow. Rodgers can go 20 of 24 and look fantastic. Um, this doesn't feel like a Zach will, you know, uh, year, like in years past where it's just defense dominates every single day. The defensive line just humiliates the O-line every practice, every week. This feels a bit more 50-50, but it definitely feels as of late like the Jets offense just, um, it's just clunky, it, it, it's it's discombobulated, whereas the defense, of course, is firing on all cylinders. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Are you starting to get, starting to get uh, concerned, maybe with the continuity offensively, with the injuries, with the starters not having any time at all together right in preseason again that could change or are you kind of flipped like you actually don't want the starters out there because you don't want to risk rogers getting hurt you don't want to risk breeze getting hurt or something like that you know garrett twisting his ankle oh all, all, you know all of a sudden he's out for a week he's, he's gonna miss that week one uh opener against san francisco i think it's a pretty interesting conversation uh but anyway let me know your thoughts down below and as always go jets